Question 1. The students in an after-school revision session individually sit an ICT mark paper. Their marks have been recorded in the cumulative frequency diagram below. How many students achieved a grade B or below? To do this we need to simply look at the graph and see where grade B is. We'll draw up to there. And when we hit the curve, we'll draw across to the left to read off the value. We have nine students to that point that gained either a grade B or a grade C. So that's our answer. Question two. The students in an after-school revision session individually sit an ICT mock paper. Their marks have been recorded in the cumulative frequency diagram below. Which of the following statements are true? A. Not one student achieved an A star. If we look at the curve here, we see that from A to A star, the cumulative frequency graph does not increase. There are 12 students that, in, that up to now have got at least a grade um, C or above. And then there's 12 students that have got a grade C or above. So no students got a grade A star. So this is true. For part B, 13 people got a grade A or below. First we go to grade A, and then we'll read up to the curve, and then across to the cumulative frequency. From there we can see that 12 got a grade A or below, so this is incorrect. Next for part C, three pupils got above a grade A, a grade B. If we read up from grade B, and then across, we see that nine pupils got a grade B or C. So, the number of pupils who got a grade above B is 12, the total number of students, take away 9, which equals 3. So three pupils got above a grade B, true. Our answers were true, false, and true. Question 3. An exams officer compares the geography summer examination results of its year 11 group. The marks achieved by the pupils have been recorded in the scatter graph below. Which of the following statements are true? A. The median mark is 30. To calculate the median, we first need to know the total, and that's the highest point of the graph here. So the total number was 60 students. The median has to be halfway through the data, so that's 60 divided by 2 is 30. And then we read off from this side the cumulative frequency. So across to the, to the graph and down to 30, which is true. So for B, not one student got a mark of 20 or below. So from the marks here, we'll read up from 20 and then across to around 5. So it seems that 5 students got a mark of 20 or below, meaning this one is false, since the claim was that none got a mark of 20 or below. Finally, C. 10 students got a mark above 40. From the graph, we can read off that if we go up from the mark of 40 and across the cumulative frequency, we see that 50 students got a mark of 40 and below. That means that the remainder, 60 minus 50 equals 10, students must have got a mark above 40, which means this is true. Finally, we have true false and true. Question 4. An English comprehension test is individually sat by all the year 8 and year 9 students in the school. Their marks have been recorded in the cumulative frequency diagram below. Which of the following statements are true? A. The median mark in year 9 is higher than the median mark in year 8. First to calculate the median, we need to know the total number of students. And that's the highest point on the graph. So the total number of students is 80. The median mark is halfway through the data, so that's 80 divided by 2. So there are 40 students would give us the median. So we go over to the cumulative frequency at 40 and draw a line across, intersecting both curves. And then we'll draw a, a line down at the intersection for both of those. So in year 8, we had a mark of 40 is the median, and for year 9, 50 is the median mark. So the median mark in year 9 is higher than the median mark in year 8. True. The lowest mark in year 9 was greater than 10. If we look on the year 9 curve, nobody got a mark of 10, which means, obviously, that the lowest mark had to be greater than that. So 
so true. Finally, for C, 10 more people got a mark of 30 or less in year 9 than year 8. So let's go to the mark of 30 and draw up from there and then across the cumulative frequency. So, in year 8, we go up from 30 to the curve for year 8 and then across. So 20 people got a mark of 30 or less. And in year 9, 10 people got a mark of 30 or less. So in this case, there were actually 10 fewer people who got a mark than 30 or less in year 8 than year 9. So this statement is false. Finally, we have that this statement is true, true and false. Question 5. The physics GCSE grades attained by year 11 pupils in a school are recorded in the cumulative frequency diagram below. Which of the following statements are true? A. Not one student got a grade E. Since we can see here from the diagram that at least some students got a grade E, there is a value here, that is clearly false. For B, 40 students got above a grade C. So, if we find out the number of students who got a C or below, then the rest of the students must have got above a grade C. So the number of students who got C or below, we just read from C and then across. So that's 60. And the total number of students, well that's the highest point on the cumulative frequency diagram, that's 100. So the difference between those, 100 minus 60 equals 40 students must have got a grade above C. So that's true. 40 students were awarded a grade C. To calculate this, we can find out the number of students that got a C or below, and then take away the number of students who got a D or below, and that will give us just the number of students who got grade C. So, 60, take away 20, equals 40 students that got grade C. So that's true. Given our final answer, that's false, true, and true. Question 6. The box plot below summarises the marks achieved by year 6 pupils in their recent numeracy test. The test was out of a maximum of 25 marks. Which of the following statements are true? A. The lowest mark was 0. The lowest mark on the box plot is here, which is 5. So, lowest is 5. The claim was 0, so that is false. For B, the median mark is 15. The median is denoted by the bar in the centre of the box plot, which is 15, so true. And the range of marks is 20. To calculate the range, we need to know the highest value. In this case, the highest value here is 25, and the lowest value, which we already found was 5. The range is the difference between those, so that's 25 minus 5 is 20, which is true. Finally, that's false, false, and true. Question 7. The marks achieved by Year 12 students in their mechanics and statistics exams have been summarised in the box plot below. Which of the following statements are true? A. 25% of people got a mark below 70 in statistics. If we look at the statistics box in the Moiskin plot, we can see that the mark of 70 corresponds to the median, this bar in the centre. The median splits the data in two. There's 50% the data above that mark and 50% below. So the claim that 25% got a mark below is clearly incorrect. B. The median statistics mark is 10 marks higher than the median mechanics mark. We know the, medi medi the median statistics mark, that's 70, and the median mechanics mark is here, 60, which is 10 marks higher, so true. The range of marks in both exams were the same. To find the range, we need to take away the smallest value from the largest value. For statistics, that's 90, which we can see here. Take away 30. So 90 minus 30 is 60. And for mechanics, we have 80. Take away 10, which equals 60. These two are clearly not the same, so that claim is false.
finally, we have false, true, and false. Question 8. A parent wishes to compare the quality of mathematics teaching across four prospective schools in the area. She decides to have a look at how the Year 7 students in each school performed in their final mathematics exam this year. The marks across the four schools are summarised in the box plot below. Which of the following statements are true? A. The median mark in School A is the same as the median mark in School B. So, if we look for the median mark in School A, that's 40, and we read off the median mark for School B in the centre of the box plot there, that's 50. 40 is not equal to 50, so that is clearly false. 25% of the students for B in School D got a mark above 70. So, if we read across from 70 to School D, we see that that hits the upper quartile there. The box plot divides the data into 25% between the upper quartile and the highest value, and 75% from there and below. So the claim is correct. 25% of the students in school D are between the upper quartile and the highest value there, 70. Three quarters of the student in school B scored more than the highest mark in school A. So first, let's draw across from the highest mark for school A, that's here at 60. And we can see that that hits the upper quartile of school B. We know there's 25% of the scores in school B between there and their highest value. So that means a quarter of school B is equivalent to 25%. Scored more than the highest mark, which is false. Finally, we have false, true, and false. Question 9. A parent wishes to compare the quality of mathematics teaching across four prospective schools in the area. She decides to have a look at how the year 11 students in each school performed in their final mathematics exam last year. The maths across the four schools are summarised in the box plot below. Suppose that the parent gets access to the complete list of last year's mathematics examination grades in school C. She decides to list the marks for school C down into ascending order. If there are 119 students who sat the maths exam in school C, what mark did the 60th student down the list get in their exam? So, we notice here that the median mark we know is calculated by n plus 1 over 2. And in this case, 119 plus 1 over 2 would be the 60th student, which is the one we actually want. So, if we look for the median, that's the bar in the centre of the box plot, and read across, we find that that student... 40 marks, which is our answer. Question 10. A head teacher wishes to compare the academic performance of the A set and B set French classes. She does this by comparing the marks of the students in each class were awarded in a recent French listening exam. Their scores from both classes are summarised in the table below. Which of the following statements are true? A. The median mark in class 1 is 15 marks higher than the median in class 2. So, if we want the median for class 1, we need to just go to the box plot and read off from the bar in the centre. That's 40. And we want the same for class 2. Read off from here. And that will be 25. Find the difference. That's 15 marks. And we want to make sure that the median in class 1 is 15 marks higher. That is true. B. The range of marks in both classes is the same. To calculate the range, we need to take the top value and the smallest value and find the difference. Okay, So class 1, we have 75 minus 20, which equals 55. And for class 2, we have 60. minus 5, which is 55. So they are both the same, that's true. C. The lowest mark in class 1 is 15 marks higher than the lowest mark in class 2. So the lowest mark in class 1 was 20, and the lowest mark in class 2 was 5, so we find the difference, and that's true, that it was 15 marks higher.
So all three statements are true.